Welcome to our class on Chassidus. This week we're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse from the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Lahavin Inyan Hanagoyim to understand the idea of the plagues, the leprosies, the lesions. When the Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Shabbos Parshas Metzairah, the seventh day of the month of Nisan, in the year Tavshin Mem Aleph, 41 years ago. Now what's interesting is, this is the only Chassidic discourse we have from the Rebbe on the Torah portion of Pastor Metzairah. Because it always fell out around Pesach, so a lot of the Chassidic discourses were about Pesach. So the, the, the Chassidic discourse begins, to understand the idea behind all these plagues and all these leprosies that the Jewish people have. Which obviously speaks about Lent in this week's Torah portion about the Nagoyim, and also in the previous Torah portion of Pasha Tazria. And this week's Torah portion of Metzoria comes right after Mazria, and they both connect, they both speak about the same topic. So the Rebbe brings from the Alta Rebbe Lakutei Torah, which is a classical Hasidic book of discourses from the Alta Rebbe on the Parsha, and he brings from Eight Chaim, and he says as follows that the reason for the plagues, the reason for the, the leprosy, is because there's a lacking of the light of Chachma. In other words, the Goyim come when you have the light of Bina, and the way to fix it, obviously, is to bring back in the light of Chachma. Just to clarify, the Zohar uses the term Av and Aim, because Av is a reference to Chachma, and Ima is referring to Bina. So if you have the light of Chachma, there's no leprosy. And if, unfortunately, the light of Chachma is not there, and you have the light of Bina, then you do have leprosy. In other words, the idea, as Rebbe explains, that we should bring in back the light of Chachma, that it should shine in a pnimius, in an internal way. And it should shine where? Into Zah, into the small face, which is referring to the Midois, Chesed Gvur Tferes Nesachot Yesoid, into the six Midois. And the Rebbe says this is the difference actually between during the week and Shabbos. Why? Because what happens during the week? During the week, the the the, the, the in za, which is that's where the action is in the small face, which is referring to all the midos chesed gur yisoid. So during the week, what what shines there? I'll, I'll say it in Hebrew. I'll translate that chirayim, the chitzonis, the external part of the intellect of ava aim chachman bina. However, when it comes to Shabbos. What shines into the Zah, what shines in the Midas, what shines into the emotions of Atsilas comes from the Pneumius, the internal part and the essence of the intellect of Ava. So in other words, just like the Nagoyim, the plagues come from this lacking the light of Chachma, and if you bring back the light of Chachma, there's no plagues. So the same difference is between during the week and Shabbos. Why is Shabbos so special? And the answer is very simple, because during the week we're living, but what are we getting our energy from? We're getting our energy from the Achirayim, the Chitzonius, the external part of Chachma Bina. However, on Shabbos, we get the, the light comes from the internal part of Chachma Bina. So if we have the light from the internal part of Chachma Bina, so therefore Shabbos obviously is a very, very special day and a very, very holy, holy day. And um, and therefore, so what happens is when the light of the internal part and the essence of, of the intellect of Chachma and Bina go into Zah, go into the Midois, then there's no room to have any plagues, any discoloration or any issues whatsoever. So the goal what we want is we want the light of Chachma. The internal part of the light of Chachma should be shining up our life, not only on Shabbos, but during the week. Because we have the internal part of Chachma shining up our life, we will not have any, God forbid, any disease, any plagues, or anything anything negative going on in our life. And Rebbe says he'd like to connect connect this with the psalm that we say, the psalm that we say in the prayer Shabbos morning, which is actually comes from King David's Psalms, uh, Psalm 19. So it says as follows: Lam al David, Hashamayim The heavens. Now the literal translation could be Mesaprim comes from Sipra, like telling a story, but the Zoya says as follows. That when there's, when, when there's shining on the day of Shabbos, and what's shining and what's totally felt is real joy and real happiness, real chedva, 
And that's felt all over the world. And Shabbos, what shining is, is powerful light of joy and happiness. Just like Hashemayim, the heaven, Mesaprim. In other words, and what is it? What, so the Zoya translate not in the Sopram as saying a story, because then it should say how Shemayim, the heaven, Medabrim are speaking, but it uses the term Mesaprim. And if we wanted to say, like telling a story, it should have used the word Dibur. But use the idea of Masaprim. What does Sapra come from? Sapra comes from shining. You know, it's like sparkling. So Shamayim Masaprim on Shabbos. When you say the, the Psalm now, Psalm 19, where it says, Let me say, Masaprim. What does the Zoya say? That on Shabbos it's shining, it's glowing, this powerful light is shining on Shabbos. And it's explained, Rebbe says, in, in the Siddur. And also in the Pir Shamilot, in the second edition, that, that based on the difference between during the week and Shabbos, that during the week, what light shines in Zah, in the emotions, the six Midas, that's where we live, only the external part of intellect, of the of 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 of, 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 of which is Chachman Bina, but on Shabbos, what happens on Shabbos? What shines in Zah? What shines in our emotions? The Pneumius, the internal part, the essence of in intellect of Avo, That's what shines. So based on this, that's what the Zohar says that Mesaprim is not a story, but it means it's it's a, a light and it's sparkling. So Shabbos, what we have is we have the powerful light. The internal part of Moichin shines into our Midois. And that's why Shabbos is a whole different level. In other words, if it means just Mesaprim as saying a story, that would be a stutta story. That's Chitzainius, that's external part of intellect. And that's what, that's what, that's what shines during the week. During the week, we have stories. We have a chitzonius of moichin. However, when it, real light, real sparkles, that's referring to the internal part of intellect. And the internal part of intellect of Chachman Bina. And that internal part of intellect of Chachman Bina, that's what shines in Shabbos. And that's why it says in the same verse, uh, in the same, in the same, in the same Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 19, it says, Torah Hashem Tmima, a Torah of Hashem is, is complete, Meshivas Nefesh, it calms your soul. Well, has it calmed your soul? Because on Shabbos, what happens is we know you have an extra soul, a, a soul that we get on Shabbos. We have a whole different extra soul that we get on Shabbos. What is the extra soul that we get in Shabbos? Over here, the, the, the Rebbe explains. The soul that we have in Shabbos is when the light of Moichin, the light of Ava Aim, specifically from Chachma, the internal part, um, comes into Zod. That's the extra soul that we have in Shabbos. And that's why the Zoya says, Mesapre means Menarim Menoitzim, which means it gives off powerful light, it gives off power, powerful energy, powerful sparks. Why? Because what happens on Shabbos? On Shabbos, the light that we have is coming from the internal part of intellect, Pneumius HaMoichim, of Avaim, and that comes into Zah. And that's why we have an extra soul. The extra soul that we have on Shabbos is the light of Chachma that comes into the Midois. And that's why it says in the same ver in the same Psalm, Psalm 19, um, the Ain Nistar Mechamasai. You cannot hide from the from, from the from the powerful heat. Why? Because since what is shining? What's shining is Pneumius Hamoichim, the internal part of intellect of Ava Aim. So the the warmth and the heat and the light is all over the place. And it comes on all levels of, 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 of creation, all levels of Istalshalas. So therefore, hey, Nista, how can you hide? When the, when the internal part of Chachma is shining, when the light is so strong, there's no way to hide. So that's what happens, basically what, on Shabbos, and that's also the idea of Nergoyim, that when you have the internal part of Chachma that's shining, then you don't have any plagues, and that's that's the experience that we experience on Shabbos. Now, I'm going to explain it practically, because we know everything in, 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 in Chassidus is not about just learning deeply lofty ideas and going on to a you know, spiritual trance, which is also it's great, but you want to make it practical. What does it mean practical? It's like this. Generally speaking, there's two types of walking. There's two types of going. There's two types of levels of growth. In other words, in Hebrew, it's called hiluch. There's two types of ways of going. One is milmaila lamata, which means you're taking a very, very high light and energy and bringing it down to this world. And the other way is milmata lamaila, elevating the world to a spiritual place. 
in, in Kabbalah, what's the term, what's the another term for milmaila lamata, bringing down a light down here, or milmata lamaila, bringing something down here on high? It's the, the terms would be, would be rotsui v'shuv. Rotsui means when you're going milmata lamaila, you're trying to leave the world, you're leaving rotsui. And milmaila lamata, when you're bringing down the energy into the world, is called shuv. Rotsui v'shuv. Now, so these are Kabbalistic terms. These are spiritual terms. Melmaila Lamata, bringing the light down here. Melmaila Lamata, bringing the, the, the energy from here on, on a spiritual level. Ratsui, leaving the world, so to speak, and Shiv coming back. What does that mean practically? How, how does that translate to us? If you want to experience Ratsui, you want to experience Shiv, how do you do it? Shiv explains very simple. That's the, the, generally speaking, the two terms of Melmaila Lamata, Ratsui and Shiv, is referring to our spiritual work of prayer, and our spiritual work of Torah study. In other words, prayer, as we know, it says in the Torah, when Yaakov had the famous dream, so it says he, he saw a ladder that the feet were on the ground, but the head was on high. So in other words, <clears throat> in other words what does that mean? So prayer is with the feet are on the ground, we're down here and we're trying to go on high. What is that called? Milmata Lamaila. Or what is it called? Ratsui. We're trying to elevate out. We're trying to, you know, get out of the world. We're trying to get out of where we're stuck in the physical world. So prayer is Malmata Lamaila and the idea of Ratsui. On the other hand, what is Torah? So we know it says in the Torah, God says clearly, Kimina Shamayim Dibaratimacham. Hashem spoke to us from heaven. So Torah is Melmaila Lamata, bringing down godliness into the world, or Shuv, returning the godly energy into this world. So that's in general. So in general, just to be clear, in general, Torah is bringing down the light down here, and prayer is get, picking us up out of the physical world. That's in general. But more specific, Rebbe says, in every one of Torah, which is generally Milmaila Lamata, and Tefillah, prayer, which is Milmaila Lamata, you have both. In other words, Torah, you have the component of, even though generally it's Milmaila Lamata, but it's also Milmaila Lamata, it also elevates out of the world, and prayer, even though it's generally it also brings down to light in the world. The Torah explains as follows. Because in Torah itself, so for example, there's two parts to the Torah. You have the Torah Shabbat Sav, the written part of the Torah, and that is, you read the Torah, the five books of Moses, that's godly stuff, and that brings down a powerful light in this world. That's called Milmaila Lamata or Shuv. On the other hand, Torah Shabal Peh, when you learn Talmud, you learn Mishnah, it's dealing with physical things in this world, so you're elevating this world. So that's called Milmata Lamaila, or the idea of what? Or, 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 the, or the idea of Ratsi. So in Torah, you have Ratsi as well. And that's why it says, in reference to Torah, so Torah Shabak Sav, which is mil, which is which which um, which is milmay lamata, which is suv. It's called yoyim because you're bringing you're bringing light into the world. On the other hand, Torah shabal peh because the idea is you're trying to leave the world, you're elevating the world. It's called Lila because you're dealing with the darkness. So you see, Torah has both, even though its primary energy is milmay lamata. The same thing also says in reference to prayer. In other words, even though we just brought the verse where it says prayer, the, the, the legs are on the ground, but the, it's going up on high, that means you're leaving the world. It's the idea of Rasi. But nevertheless, it says in the same, in the, in the same verse, it says, Yeah, they're going up, but they're also coming back down. Not only are they going up, but going up, but they're also go, go, going back down. And, and, the, and even you see in the prayer service itself, so what happens in the prayer service? So in the beginning of the prayer service, it's all about leaving the world. In other words, and you and you and you and you're 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 uh, you're, um, you're, go, you're going on high and you're asking Hashem, you know, for any anything that you need. But afterwards, you're you're going on high. Yeah, Hashem, please help me. But then Hashem fulfills your request, and then the then the energy comes down back here. So it's coming down Lamata. And, and and if you give it also look at the end of the prayer service, what does it say at the end of the prayer service? We say the Shir Shalyon, the song of the day. What does it say at the end of the song of the day? Vahoya Hashem Lamelech, Hashem will be the king, Al Kala Aretz. In other words, even though we're trying to leave, we're trying to get close to Hashem, what does it say? Hashem will be the king on the world. We want to bring down back Hashem down here. We accept Hashem. We are not on a spiritual level, not Milmata Lamai, but Lamai Lamata, Hashem comes back into this world. What's the reason? Now, why do you need both? Melmaila Lamata and Melmata Lamaila. Why do you need both? In other words, because even though there is a tremendous quality and a tremendous superiority 
in the spiritual work of Melmata Lamaila, which means you're elevating the world, or transforming the world to make it a godly place, which is basically called Rotsui. But nevertheless, we know that Hashem did not create the world, Letoyu, to create an empty space. Because if we go ahead and elevate the whole world, and we, we, we leave the world, we want to cleave to Hashem, and everything becomes a godly place, what happens to this physical world? The world will remain empty. But Hashem wanted the world should be inhabited. But on the other hand, <clears throat> if it's just going to be Rotsu, we're going to leave the world, so this, the world's going to end up down here being Toyu. There's nothing left to the world. So you, that's why you need both. But the ultimate goal is, the ultimate goal is that we should create a dear B'tachtoinim. That literally in this physical world, in the physical world, Hashem should dwell. In other words, not only that Hashem should dwell, but the point is betachtoinim, the emphasis down in this physical world. So prayer, even though we're praying, we want to cleave to Hashem, we want to get closer to Hashem, we want to have godliness, etc. That's not the goal. The goal is to bring back godliness down into this world. Dira betachtoinim. You want to have Hashem, yes, the infinite Hashem should be here, but also where should he be? Should it be a place where it's, where, where it's physical, where it's materialistic? Now, <clears throat> so here you see that that's the two avoiders of, of Rotsu and Shuv, which generally speaking, again, the um, Torah is bringing down godliness into the world and Shuv is through prayer. But even though we learned it, uh, in, in Torah you have both and in prayer you have both. And the goal is to create the fusion. So Rebbe now explains these two components of Rotsu, which means Milmat Alamayla, leaving the world, going on to a spiritual high, and Shuv, bringing down, bringing down godliness to the world. That's the two ideas of what? Of Moichin, intellect, of Emo, which is referring to Bina, and Moichin, intellect, of Abu, which is referring to Chachma. In other words, like this. Intellect of Emo, intellect of Bina, that's the idea of Ratzu Yilamayla. Bina, the sphere of Bina, there's Chachma and Bina, uh, Chachma is called Emo, uh, um, Av and, and Amos uh, is called Bina. So Bina is about Rotsu Yilamayla. You want to leave the world. And that's why we know that the famous story in, 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 in the Torah, in reference to Nadav and Avihu, Aaron's two sons, so their avoider was Rotsi. They wanted to leave the world. And they didn't want to come back down to this world. They wanted total ecstasy. And as they went into the temple, they were drunk. Why were they drunk? In other words, they were holy people. They were not the men of you, the Aaron's two sons. They were the high priest's two sons. They were priests. So wh why were they drunk? And the and Hashem even said, the Kroyveya Kadesh, with people that are close to me, I was sanctified. So they were considered holy people. In other words, when they went in drunk, it wasn't they were just they, they, they decided to get drunk. It was a holy spiritual endeavor. They wanted to cleave to the Hashem. They wanted to leave their body. They wanted to get totally connected to Hashem on the deepest level. And as we know, we know that they, that when you drink wine, wine makes people happy. It makes Hashem happy, and it makes humans happy. And, but on the other hand, wine is connected to which sira? Wine is connected to bina, as it says, "Aim habonim smecha." Aim, which is referring to Bina, Habanim Smeicha. So Bina is connected to Simcha, which wine is connected to Bina. And when, as we know, it's brought down in the Talmud that Nichnas Yayin Yatsasoid. When someone takes a little Chaim, takes a little wine, all the secrets start coming out. Why? What does that mean practically? Because there are things which are concealed. Soid means it's concealed. But through drinking wine, you're able to reveal it. You're able to get excited about life. You have all the things that are bottled up. You, you have a little chaim, and all of a sudden you, you're everything that's you know that's inside. You're sharing, and that's what another one of you wanted to do. And was, they had a tremendous fire for Hashem, and by drinking wine, they brought out their tremendous passion for Hashem. They wanted to connect to Hashem on the highest level. So, in other words, you see that bina is connected to what idea of ratzi. Simcha, yayin, it's ecstasy. However, the problem is, that's not the intent. That's not what Hashem wanted. Hashem wanted is, it should be shuv, we should bring godliness into the world, not have this state of ecstasy and want to leave the world. And as we have to be nichnas b'shalem, we have to go into peace, into the state that we want to have a spiritual high, but the b'shalem. 
And every time you go to create a spiritual experience, a godly experience, you want to get close to Hashem, the, when you're going in, you have to remember the goal is to come back into this world and bring that passion and excitement to your day-to-day -day life. And therefore, since what they did was, it was a one-way ticket to heaven, they totally had ecstasy, that's not the, that's not the avoida. That's not the complete avoida. The complete avoida is the balance. Yes, Ratsui. I want to cleave to Hashem, but cleave to Hashem and then, and bring that powerful godly energy bound to this world, and live a godly life into this world. So in other words, Moichin, the Ima, Bina, what does that represent? That represents Ratsui, leaving the world. On the other hand, Moichin, the Abba, intellect of Chachma, that's all about Shuv, bringing godliness into the world. And like it's, it's, it says, it says in, in, in the Talmud, Ezo Chacham, what's an intel, uh, Chacham? Not, 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 not Bina, Ezo Chacham, the level of Chachma. Haroya, he sees as a that everything that's going to come out of his action. That's a literal translation. So Rebbe explains according to Chassidus, what does it mean, Ezo Chacham, Haroya, Sanoyed? What does it mean that he sees what, what comes out, of what's going to be born? Which means, Rebbe explains, he sees everything, how it was created, and how it came into being. And how it exists. And as you give a look, a chacham, and he goes, oh my gosh, who created the world? Hashem created the world. Who's maintaining the world? Hashem is creating the world. Every single second. So if Hashem is creating the world, and Hashem is maintaining the world, so we're like, hello, why am I getting so arrogant? Why do I even have any demands or requests? Hashem, whatever you want, teen any, I'm ready to do. You're the one that runs the world. And because he's a chacham, which means he sees the creator creating the world and maintaining the world, he's totally, in, I'll say in, in words of Kabbalah, he's batabal metzias, he doesn't exist. That's called shuv. Shuv means a chacham sees. He sees the creator. He sees that Hashem is really in charge. Hashem is the one that created the world and maintains the world. So because of that, he doesn't say, I want to leave. I'm right here, no problem. Whatever you need to do, I'm ready to do what does that mean practically? The Rebbe says as follows. <clears throat> what we learned before. Prayer is the idea of Ratzi. You want to leave the world. Torah is bringing godliness into the world. What's prayer? Prayer is Ratzi. Prayer is you want to leave. Milmata Lamaila. And like it says in the Zoyar, less Pulchana ki Pulchana Derechmisa. There's no greater love like the love of compassion. Love is unbelievable. However, that's not the end goal. The end goal is not love. Why? Because even when someone loves Hashem, and you're like so excited with the love of pleasure for Hashem, but the fact is, who's loving Hashem? You are loving Hashem. So even though love is amazing, and we love Hashem, we're delighted with Hashem, but who's loving Hashem? The ego is loving Hashem. So even though prayer is amazing, it's important to pray. But when you're praying, you are praying. There's still an I that has requests and I have demands and I have want that I want to get close to Hashem. The I still exists in prayer. However, when it comes to Chachma, Chachma is more connected to what? The idea of Torah. Bringing God down to this world. Shuv. In Chachma and in Torah, the, the, what's felt is Tachlis Habitl, I don't exist. As we said before, Chacham is Roya Sanoilis. Therefore, what do you mean? Hashem runs the world. I don't exist. Torah, you see the light of Hashem. There's no arrogance. And that's the major difference, practically, of Ratzu Yvashuv. Milmaila Lamata. And Milmata Lamaila, practically, is between the idea of prayer and, 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 prayer and, prayer and learning Torah. In other words, the idea of prayer is. That's Moichin, the Ema, that's Bina, that's where there's still a somebody, there's a something, there's arrogance. And as we know, for example, practically before you pray, you have to meditate. And it says clearly in Code of the Jewish Law. And we meditate, and, and based on what we explained in Chassidus, you have to meditate. However, because who's meditating? I am meditating. I'm trying to comprehend and understand. However, when it comes to learning Torah, it's not about me. It's about Moichin, the intellect of Chachma. In other words, what, what, what's the approach has to be when you're learning Torah? You have to be totally 
humbled, just like earth on the ground. And we say to Hashem, I can't even say, Psach Libi, please open my mouth so I can learn Torah. Up until the point we become totally nullified. We don't even exist. And specifically through our humility, the humility of Shuv, we are able to bring down godliness into this world. We are able to bring Shuv down to here. So prayer is all about the self trying to go out of this world. So it's self. Torah, on the other hand, is no self. And what does that mean, no self? And therefore Hashem comes down into the world. Now, so what are we saying? We're saying it's like this clearly. Prayer is self that wants to go on high. Torah is no self. It's about bringing God down into this world. Just one second. The fact is we know that when you learn Torah, you have to learn it, you have to comprehend it, and you have to give a halachic ruling what to do. And we know that, for example, Torah has the power to change the reality in the world. Like based on the verse, it says, the kale goimer Eli, that we, that Bezdin has the power literally to change nature. If they rule in a certain way, nature changes. So, on one hand, we're saying, Torah, we're nobody. What do you mean we're nobody? We're giving rulings and we're changing, we're changing reality. So, says, when someone's learning Torah, even though he's giving a ruling, and even though the ruling is changing at reality, it's not the person that's changing reality. Like the verse says, the awesome Dvari Befich Hashem puts the words in the mouth of the Torah scholar. And it's Aniha Mishnah it's the Mishnah that's speaking from the from the person. And like the, the Zohar says, What is the face of Hashem Darash B? In other words, it's not Rash B that the Rashim Baichai, he was no, he represented Hashem. And like Urshbi said, I'm like, I'm connected to Hashem and one not. It's not about me. It's really, I'm just, I'm just a representation of Hashem. And this was, this was by, by, by Urshbi, Urshim by Yechai, and he, we know he, he was Torah Nasai. Torah, he learned Torah 24 7. That was his job, that was his occupation. And it's interesting, everybody says, what do you mean Torah was his occupation? Umnasi means occupation. What does it mean as Torah was his occupation? Which means that he brought down Torah literally into this world, into the physical world of an occupation. Torah has the power, yes, it's not about me, I'm totally accepting, but what am I, it's, it's really Hashem is the one that's making it all happen. And through learning Torah, we bring down Hashem specifically into this world. So based on this, Trevor explained so beautifully the whole idea of the plagues. In other words, if we're dealing with moichin of Ema, Bina, so there's, there's an ego there. There's an ego in Bina. So because there's an ego there, it's possible that it can leach out some of the godly energy into un unholy places. And if you end up with a Goyim. If it's Bina, so the self, in self, so godliness can leach out and then you have you have a plague you have a disease and like now the author explains to look at the Torah because when you have the concealment of the intellect of Chachma of Abba so that creates the Tsaras and like a Targum actually says um, he translates for Tsaras for Sagira it's locked up which means the, the it's unfortunate that the godly energy the godly energy is locked up in there and because the godly energy is locked up, because you don't have the, you don't have the humility, therefore you end up with the Nagayim, you end up with the plague. But when you are able to bring back in the light of Chachma, the light of Abba, which is all humility, which means it's, a, it's really all about Hashem. Oira Chachma, what's the light of Chachma? This, this, it's all about Hashem. There's, there's no self in there. So by bringing back in the Oira Chachma, Bringing back in the Torah, which is which is the Torah, the the, the light of Chachma, the light of Hashem, that creates the purity, and not only does it create the purity, it can take something which is impure and make it pure. Through Torah, through the light of Chachma, a it, it a you create the purity, and you can take something which is impure and make it pure, and that's why actually the Torah says clearly, Vehuva el if you want to become pure, you have to go to the priest. Why are you going to the priest? Because Kayin is Torah. Kayin is someone that's a Torah scholar. Like it says, it says in the verse clearly, Sis say Kayin, the, the lips of the priest. 
Um, Yishmu should watch Das Torah. He's the opinion of Torah. You've actually appealed. So you see clearly the Torah descri- uh, uh, connects Torah with the, with, with, with the Kayin. And by the Kayin, we know it also says, They're going to teach Torah to the Jewish people. And, and that's why the Torah says you, you should come to the Kayin. Why? Because why? Because Torah, the Kayin is all about bringing godliness into this world. And by going to the Kayin, which is represented by which is represented of Torah, that's how you bring purity into the world. And that's why it also says Zois Tia Torah Samatayra. It doesn't say this should be the purity of the Matayra. This should be the Torah of the Matayra. Why? Because the Torah is the purity. In other words, if you want to totally nullify the negativity of the plague, you want to get rid of the plague, you want to get rid of the disease, it comes from Torah, it comes from Chachma, by bringing godliness down into this world. Not only that, not only do we bring godliness into the world, but we actually reveal the Yisrei Na'ur, the, the power of light. And like Rashi says in reference to the plagues that were, were in the houses, that why were the plagues in the houses? So Rashi says, because it's good news for you. Why? Because since the people that lived before used the walls of the houses to hide their treasures, their gold and silver, etc. And when the plague comes along, and the priest comes along, and it says, the Koyan says, you got to break down the wall. So what are you going to find? You're going to find tremendous tre- tre- treasures. You're going to find holy sparks. And by by bringing the coin in not only do you become pure but you actually benefit because you end up having tremendous powerful powerful treasures and so that you have the yisra in there's more of a light through torah and that's why it actually says that back to the verse psalm 19 that we say shabbos morning hashamayim mesaprim and we explained already before from the Zoyar that what does Mesapra mean? Powerful lights. Not a story. Not, not Bina. But it's talking Chachma. It's referring to Moichin of, of, of Av and Aim, Chachma and Bina. In other words, when the light of, of, um, of Chachma is shining, then the, ver- the, the verse in that same psalm says, Ein Nister You can't hide from the heat. Why? Because the warmth and the light reaches every single place. Even in the places which are hidden and concealed and all over the light goes to, the light of Chachmah. And it actually elevates the holy sparks. And that's why there's another verse in that same Psalm, Psalm 19 that says, Yossis kegibar loretz oirach. He comes out like a strong person for, and, and, for, 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 and, and he runs the whole, the whole path. So the Rebbe says, what's Yossis? Gibar is a strong prayer. What does Yasis mean? So Yasis, um, numerically, so the Yud is 10, the Shin is uh, 300, the Yud is 10, and the Shin is 300. So you have a total of 620. What's the highest Sphira, even higher than Chachma? Keser. Keser, Chaf is 20, Saf is 400, and Rage is 200, 620. So Yasis, numerically, is the same value as Keser. And as Yasis Kegibar, that when you draw in Yasis, you draw in Keser, then you have the real power, the real power to run. And like it says, Yoyrek Echetz, you run like, like, like an arrow. Up until Ad Meheri Yarzvari, the word of Hashem goes all over the place. And up to the point that you reach to the lowest levels. So Yasis Kegibar means you're going from Keser, Loretz Oirach. Literally, you're going down to the lowest level, the, the path. And I was, what do I mean? Why is Oirach the lowest level? Never explains it's very simple. There's a derech, there's a road. A road generally goes from, from the, from the, uh, from the palace of the king uh, to the cities, outside, etc. Roads go, you know, in open, big roads. However, if you have to go through these small, uh, end, end streets and small uh, places, the, so what, what goes there? An oirach, like a little path goes, and the path goes literally to the smallest corners and the furthest pa- places, up until the furthest places in this physical world. Or like, for example, there it says, when it says in reference to a, a woman menstruating, it says oirach kanash in the way of a woman, like it's explained in this week's parasha. And even on the lowest level, so the point is yasis kigibetz lerch oritz oirach, which means yasis, we bring literally from the highest level from keser, but the goal is not to stay in keser, the goal is to bring it down to oirach, to bring it down to every single physical part of the world, idea of what, of shuv, of bringing down into this world. So based on what Shabbat says, we understand practically in our spiritual service of Hashem in Golos, 
in exile that we're in, like it says, we're living in Eretz Onyi, where, like it says in reference to Ephraim, but Eretz Onyi, in the, in, in the land of my affliction, and those exile that we're, it's the land of our affliction, that what's the reason? Why are we here? Why are we in Gullus? Why are we being afflicted? Because the ultimate goal of Gullus is, and the purpose of Gullus is, not God forbid for the affliction and for the suffering. It's because of the tremendous elevation that's going to happen afterwards. And just like we saw before, that the plagues in the houses was, that when they broke the walls of the houses, there was treasures, treasures of gold in the houses. So the Rebbe said the same thing also, the whole idea of exile that we're in, is so that we should have the new house. What new house? The third base of Migdash. The whole goal of exile is to have the third base of Migdash. And by doing our, our actions and our work throughout Gullus, when it's dark, when we're in exile, we're going to marry it to the building of the third base of Migdash. And we're going to have a new build, a new, a new, a new, base, a new base of Migdash. Not only new, but it's going to be a whole new novel idea and off the charts of anything we had before. And just like when we went out of Egypt, so it says that you're not slits and Mitzrayim. We cleaned out Egypt. Another same thing also in this exile that we're going to take with us the treasures of gold, all the holy sparks that are in exile, together with houses full of good things, literally. And we'll come, the Rebbe says, very, very soon to building of the base of Migdash, the third base of Migdash. And we know the third base of Migdash is going to be a, 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 a building which is going to be Nitzchi. It's going to last forever. As the verse says, Migdash Hashem koin yedecha. The Migdash Hashem himself is going to carve with his own hands. And we're going to have a redemption. Not a redemption. We're going to have Hashem Gullus afterwards. Redemption is never going to be, it's never going to be a Gullus again. We're going to have the redemption, the true redemption, the complete redemption through Mashiach Tzidkenu. So obviously it's a beautiful, beautiful Hasidic discourse. It teaches us the powerful way not to have chashlom any disease by bringing in the light of chachma, the light of Torah. And when we bring in the light of chachma, the light of Torah, we'll not only have not all disease, we'll have all the real purity and we'll all merit to, as the Rebbe finished off by saying, the gula ha-mitis ha with the building of the third base of Mikdash. Have a great and blessed week. Shavua Tov.